What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for October 20th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. We got a big show today, but first, let's start with the fills. Stick with the obvious. Not ideal. Not gonna, even going to sugarcoat it or, or say not ideal, uh, especially when their chances were there. Like you could have gone up 3 nothing, but. I mean, not taking anything away from the Diamondbacks and, and Fott. I mean, he pitched one hell of a game. And truthfully, I, I, I think part of it is, if you listen to the announcers, they were saying that I, – and I was only able to pick pick up bit, pick up bits and pieces because of soccer and, and everything. But it sounded like he was drafted during COVID. And because of not really having a place to play and kind of do the low A and, and rookie ball um, – this is sort of what they expected because I know everybody was like, oh, Jesus, we're, here we go. And he was called up and down all year and he's looking like Randy Johnson out there. But I think this is what they expected him. And they said every time they went down and told him to work on something, he would work on it. So he never had that in the minors. Uh, so I, I think that's important to recognize. Um, I don't want to take anything away from him. But early in that game, the Phillies were swinging a lot of bad pitches. And... I, I like to have eight strikeouts that early through four innings or five innings, and and most of them again were swinging, and they were just like Bohm seems off. I I I think I need Bohm to start getting hot tonight, but it just they helped him out, and it could have been partly the umpire. Apparently, uh, before the game, I read that of all of the guys that could be behind the plate, he had the lowest ranking and uh, had very inconsistent strike zone and very much a pitcher's umpire. And I mean, it showed that it was a two to one pitcher's duel. And I mean, I'm not saying like I've, I can count at least three or four pitches on both sides. that were just ridiculous. Um, the one that, that Alec Bohm got, they was called a ball to make that count full. I think it was in like the seventh or eighth. I mean, that was, right there on the the outside corner um and then he gave him the one on the back so uh not saying that it was because of the umpires i would never really put the blame on that because he was inconsistent on both ends but just something to point out but again though the phillies swung at a lot of bad pitches and i don't know i mean you, i don't know whether it was like a hangover from like the 10 run output from before or a little bit of jet lag or what, but I look for them to bounce back. Maybe it was the five five oh seven start. Who knows? But a hell of a, a hell of a uh, start by R- Ranger Suarez. Love that dude, man. I absolutely love Ranger Suarez. He might be my favorite guy on this team. Um, and the defense between Bohm and Turner and Stott is just phenomenal. Um, so it's not the end of the world. I was looking back on the archives, and this day last year, I, I started off the show by everybody going deep cleansing breaths, deep cleansing breaths, because it was that game two out in San Diego where we blew the 4-0 lead. Um, Not nearly as devastating as that. We also already have a 2-0 lead. And you got to keep in mind, I mean, Arizona, this is the National League Championship Championship Series. They're a good team, and they're playing at home with their backs against the wall. And the fact that our pitching staff still only held them to two runs. And I think because of the historic output of the offense, nobody's talking about how dominant our pitching staff has been in the postseason. So Sanchez takes the mound today. Uh, He says he's ready. Uh, Kind of a surprise that they put him in there. I like it. I've been saying he should have been the fourth starter for the playoffs the entire time Um, over Walker who, ironically enough, his only postseason start came for the Diamondbacks in 2017. But, I mean, I, I'm not opposed either to doing, like, having Sanchez on, like, here you go, two times through the order, four innings, and then bringing in Walker for an inning or two to keep that mentality and then go to the bullpen to give them some time off. Uh, Strom is rested, uh, but I, would like to, I wouldn't mind seeing Walker come in. Um, but it, it's going to be okay. The point of what I'm trying to tell you is it's, it's okay. No need. We were in worse shape last year and, and came off. Um, but again, what what again? I mean, what a pitcher's duel. And it, it just it happens. We weren't going to sweep them. So we're, we're in a, still in a very, very good position. Today's game is a little bit more important than what we would like it to. But again, they're throwing a bullpen game. I like Sanchez. So I think we're going to be okay. Just, well, now, the story might be different tomorrow, 
But you got to take these one game at a time, one pitch at a time. And Bryce Harper pretty much said, he's like, yo, we got to put this behind us and move on. So we will have more on this tomorrow. Phil's Diamondbacks tonight at 8. Sanchez versus, I forget who they're starting in the bullpen. I think it was the, I forget, the guy that gave up three runs in the sixth. Uh, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But all we need to do is believe and we'll be all right. Best way to believe Go to phillygoat.com, get that Believe Philly shirt, the one that they're wearing on the field. Go check out their other selection of stuff they have for the Eagles, Flyers, Sixers, Union, Philly-centric. Uh, you name it, they got it. Go to phillygoat.com, get your Believe shirt. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. You got to believe, just like Tugger used to say, go to phillygoat.com, get that shirt. Get it in time for the World Series run and use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off. All right, quick housekeeping before we get back into the flow of things. There will be a new Back to the Future coming out this afternoon. I, I'm off of work. Once I get the kids on the bus, I'm going to record early. So look for it early this afternoon, uh, later this afternoon, I should say, early this evening. I'm going to do that before I get into my cleaning duties for the princess's birthday party uh, this weekend. But gotta love it she she rules the roost um but be sure to look for that and in the meantime check out the jimmy rollins dick allen hall of fame special uh from last week that's back to the future with a ph all right some sad news before we get get started into our other headlines and it was reported yesterday that burt young uh died october 8th his daughter confirmed it yesterday and you know Bert as Paulie from the Rocky movies, and just a, a sad, sad story. One of my favorite characters, probably my favorite character from the movie. Uh, however, one thing, and my buddies, we have a text chain, and my one buddy put something up, and I didn't realize he was in the Navy, but he was a professional boxer and boxed in, the, or maybe not professional, but he a boxed and had like a thirty-four and two boxing record, which I feel like being such an iconic part of the greatest boxing franchise ever, probably the greatest boxing movie ever. I feel like we would have known more about his boxing career, but Burt Young died 83 years old. And, um, and I'll give credit unlike channel 10 who steals my positivity Tuesday and doesn't even bring me on to, to talk about anything. I read in Philly mag, um, and they had an article basically was like, there was no Rocky without Paulie. And I think you can, in terms of the movie and the character development, yes, like that, especially in Rocky one, they were, had played off of each other so well. But I think to me, like Rocky or Paulie made the Rocky franchise movies, like all of them. And like, I just, I love him. He's my favorite character. And my all time favorite scene from is in Rocky three, when uh, Paulie gets laid off and steals the meat and goes to jail, and Rocky bails him out of jail, and uh, gives he's like the role he's like I already gotta watch. Uh, my wife and I still say that he's like I gotta watch. Um, and then they get into the fight where um, like they're arguing. He's like, "You want a job? You want a job? Yeah, give me a job." All you had to do was ask. Like I don't know why that it's so funny. And then the conversation when they're walking out, he's like, "Hey, you punch pretty well, really." Yeah, and then he looks at the car. Is that new? How much did it cost? A lot. Like it's just one of my favorite scenes of all time of all the Rocky movies. And to me, Paulie is is the the best character in the whole Rocky franchise. But let me know what you think. Who's your favorite Rocky character in honor of Burt Young's life and playing Paulie in the Rocky franchise? Let me know. I'm gonna put the polls up on my social media, on Spotify. Shoot me a text message. Let me know who is the best. Rocky character. I'm not even going to give like I'm leaving it open ended, but to me it's hands down Polly. I got to watch. You want a job? Yeah, I want a job. All you had to do was ask. All right. Eagles update. Uh Jalen Carter, Lane Johnson both were limited in practice. Good signs. Uh, I tend to kind of think that especially with the way this game is going to go, they might be kind of limiting Carter on purpose to keep him fresh because they're going to need to get some pressure on Tua or else it's going to be a track meet out there. Uh, positive note, Gar Darius Slay and Sidney Brown both were full go. That's huge. Julio Jones is expected to be the third receiver. 
which helps with the red zone. I mean, I still not still not sure how I feel about it, but he's here. Uh, I, the trade deadline's not for another like eleven days, so we have time to to see what goes on. But good news on the Eagles front. We'll have more on this game as the weekend goes. Sixers play their final preseason tune-up tonight against the Hawks. They did release their city jerseys yesterday, and I will say they're inspired by the uh, Reading Terminal. I actually like them. They might be my, my favorite ones. They're like a darker blue, and they have like sort of like the neon lights running through the numbers. Um, let me know what you think about that too. I actually like them. Uh, I, I would be a nice like hoodie to get or a nice hat. Like I, I don't know. I, I like the city of brotherly love ones, the white ones. Um, I think that was from last year, but I really, really like the Reading Terminal inspired ones. I like that darker blue. I don't, I don't know what it is, but let me know what you think. Um, also, James Harden not with the team for personal reasons. I mean, other than that, we okay. Here we go. Moving on. Um, it's just a trashy, bad situation. And it, speaking of trash, if you, all right, I got to work on those segues. I apologize. That one was very cheesy. But point is, go to carcan.com. If your kids are anything like mine, the back of your car looks atrocious. It's just, you name it, it's back there. Car can has things, a trash can that fits right on the back of the seats. The kids sitting, all they got to do is put them in, done, empty it. It's washable, it's reusable. And the best part is it's multi-use. You can use it as a trash can. You can use it as storage for long trips. Put their coloring books in. They can put their iPads in. Uh, if you really want to get crazy, you can put their iPads. I'm sure there's a way to sort of do it that way. You can even use it as a cooler. Um, so go to carcan.com. They have a wide selection of like car organizational things. Uh, just st- anything you need for any kind of car, a- just anything you need, go check them out. Makes a great Christmas present too. I know we're, we're getting into Christmas shopping season. My boss's husband, um, called the, I guess they get elves to come decorate their house. He had the elves out decorating the house for Christmas yesterday. So it's going to be here before you know it. Go to carcan.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery 20 off for 20% off of your order. The more you buy, there's also, they have bulk options. Um, again, it makes a great Christmas present. So go to carcan.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 20% or use the promo code Jim Montgomery 20 off for 20%. I'll get it out. I'm so used to the the Philly goat one. And I promise I will work on my transitions. That's carcan.com promo Jim Montgomery 20 off. We'll get there. All right. Union finished their regular season tomorrow night. Uh, They currently are in third place. Looks like they're going to get a bye and a second round home field advantage game. Uh, It's just a matter whether they're going to be in third or fourth place. Uh, A lot's going to be dependent upon what they do tomorrow. We'll talk more about that tomorrow, though. Flyers with another win yesterday. That's 4-1. Cam Atkinson had two goals. Uh, The power play was outstanding. Connor McDavid was held to no shots on goal. Um, Like One of the best players, if not the best player in the league. No shots on goal. 3-1 3-1 start. Like, could this team be, I don't know. It's kind of, could be one of those things. Um, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because it is rebuilding and they could use another high draft pick. But 3-1, good start. I've watched a few like bits and pieces of all four games and they actually don't look too bad. I don't know. All right, sticking with the Flyers today, we're going to go back to 1977. And this is our third day in a row with the Flyers, the Flyers hat trick. I told you I'm high on the Flyers this year. Uh, but on this day in 1977, the Flyers beat the Penguins 11 to nothing to open the season 4-0-0. Not too far off from where they are this year. So, eh. Uh, Bill Barber and Reggie Leach each had two goals. Bobby Clark had a goal and an assist. And in winning their first four games, it was the best start at the time in franchise history. So, again, this team is not too far off from that. Uh, In 1986-87, though, they did win six games in a row to start the season for the best start. But they had 31 goals in their first four games to open that 77-78 season. Think about that. 31 goals in four games. And they've only allowed – and they only allowed three. So that's like – 
what is that? Seven over seven goals a game versus giving up less than a goal a game. That's that's a hell of a start. Uh, it was their largest shutout victory in franchise history, and it is tied for the longest or longest largest margin of victory in franchise history. They beat Vancouver thirteen to two in nineteen eighty four. Um, <coughs> the season though, uh, it marked the first time in three seasons that they did not go to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, they had won the previ- two before and then lost the, the the year before, I should say. Um, it was the first time since 1972-73 that they didn't win the division, but they would be back in the mix in the next couple of years. But on this day, back in 1977, Flyers beat the Penguins 11 to nothing to start the season 4-0. and Best start at the time in franchise history. Scoring 31 goals and only giving up three. That's just that's just insane. All right, going to our Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame focus. And before we get into this, be sure to check out my boys over at the Clashing Conferences podcast. I've not gotten a chance to listen to this week's episode, but it did drop yesterday. Should be an interesting one. So go check out the Clashing Conferences podcast wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. Great take on all things NFC East. All right, today we're going to focus on another 2023 inductee. Uh, This time we're going to football. And this is one of those ones where I actually really like. I like, and maybe I'm a nerd that way, but I like hearing about, like we talked about um, Judy Art Klein yesterday, the swimmer, and I didn't know anything about her. I like learning about people that just lived a long time ago and like, getting their stories out there. And it's part of why I like this podcast so much. But this one, Truxton Hare, uh, he was from Philadelphia, played at the University of Pennsylvania from 1897 to 1900. Um, he ran, punted, kicked off, dropped, kicked extra points, played guard on deep. Like it was one of those times where uh, this era of football, like everybody did anything. It's kind of like when you're playing flag football for an intramural league in college or, Uh, Just pick up games on Thanksgiving. Like they just did whatever. Um, But he was a four time first team All American, played every minute of every game for four years. Every minute of every game, four years straight. No injuries. And they had less equipment back then. And Penn went 47 5 2 during that time. He also played on the cricket team, varsity cricket. I didn't even know that schools had cricket over here but back then. He went to the 1900 Olympics, won a gold and a silver medal in the tug of war. Yeah, they I guess they had a tug of war and a hammer throw. Uh, in 1904, he won the bronze in the – basically, I think it was more of the uh, precursor to the decathlon. They called it the all-arounder, but it was 10 events, 100-yard uh, run, shot put, high jump, 880-yard walk, hammer throw, pole vault, 120 hurdles, uh, 56 pound weight throw, long jump, and a one mile run. So it's kind of just one of those things like you just do randomly, like you see on like sitcoms. Like, all right, here's the challenge. Um, but he was a world class archer as well. Uh, so they he led the the United States archer team to uh, the 1914 championship, and he's a charter member of the College Football Hall of Fame. Truxton Hare, a legend. Again, one of those guys that you never would have heard of. uh, And I love learning about this. And I can't wait to hear stories from his family when we go to the Hall of Fame induction ceremony in November. If you want more information on this year's induction class or the 20 for 20, go to PhiladelphiaSportsHallOfFame.org. If you want more information on how you can help the organization itself or just some of the past inductees, go to phillyhall.org. But it should be a good time. I'm really looking forward to, to, to it. Tickets are still available. Go to PhiladelphiaSportsHallOfFame.org for your tickets. But shout out to you and congratulations, Truxton Hare, to you and your family. One hell of a football player, one hell of an athlete, and I'm glad to get your name out there and, and keep your legacy alive. On this day, back in 1977, the Flyers beat the Penguins 11-0, tied for the largest margin of victory in franchise history. Union looking to clinch that third seed tomorrow night. Flyers looking good this year, too. 
Uh, but hopefully we'll have more updates and more positive news on the Eagles as the weekend gets closer to that game against the Dolphins. It's okay, Phillies fans. We are going to be fine. you got to believe. Go to Philly Goat to get your Believe t-shirts. Now, Sanchez, you said you're ready. You need to come out and show me something. You've been doing it all year. I'm looking forward to to this game, and like I think the Phillies go up three to one. Um, I'm probably going to bet it too. So if you're looking for for a little action on the baseball playoff game, uh, be sure to also let me know who your favorite Rocky character is in honor of Burt Young, aka Pauly, um, who passed away earlier this month at the age of 83. For me, it hands down is Pauly. But let me know one way or the other. Social media, Jimbo underscore Mont or text message or leave comments wherever but let me know who's the best rocky character this has been this day in philly sports history i'm jim montgomery go have yourselves a friday and until next time go phils